Okay, well, welcome to chapter 14. 14.1 is human chromosomes. Our goal is to analyze how heredity and family history can impact personal health. And the far side says, go get them, brother. Creature from the dark lagoon related to the frog. History, genetics. All right. Our objectives is to identify the types of human chromosomes and karyotypes, describe the patterns of inheritance of human traits, and explain how pedigrees are used to study human traits, too. So let's think about it, though. If you had to pick an ideal organism for the study of genetics, would you choose one that produced lots of offsprings, was easy to grow in the lab, and had a short lifespan that allowed you to do several crosses per month, like fruit flies, like what we're doing? I think the reasons are obvious why it's a model specimen. All right, so our objective one is to identify the types of human chromosomes in a karyotype. To find out what makes us uniquely human, we have to explore the human genome. A genome is a full set of genetic information the organism carries in its DNA. The study of any genome starts with chromosomes, the bundles of DNA and protein found in the nuclei of eukaryotic cells. To see human chromosomes clearly, cell biologists photograph cells during mitosis, when the chromosomes are fully condensed, supercoiled, and they're easy to see. Scientists then cut out the chromosomes from the photographs and arrange them in a picture known as a karyotype. This right here is not a very good example, because it should be um, or in order from largest down to smallest. But it does show the complete diploid set of chromosomes grouped together in pairs. A karyotype from a typical human cell, which contains 46 chromosomes, is then arranged in 23 pairs. Two of the 46 chromosomes in the human genome are known as sex chromosomes because they determine an individual sex. Females have two copies of the X chromosome and males have one X chromosome and one of these teeny little tiny things, Y chromosomes. This Punnett square illustrates why males and females are born in a roughly 50 to 50 ratio. All human egg cells contain a single X chromosome, 23X. However, half of all the sperm cells carry an X chromosome and half carry a Y chromosome. This then assures that just about half the zygotes will be males and then half will be females. More than 1,200 genes are found on the X chromosome, some of which are shown here. The human Y chromosome is much smaller than the X chromosome. It contains only about 140 genes, most of which are associated with the male sex determination and sperm development. The remaining 44 human chromosomes are known as autosomal chromosomes, or autosomes. The complete human genome consists of 46 chromosomes, including 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes. So to quickly summarize the total number of chromosomes in human cells, Biologists would write 46XX for females and 46XY for males. Sorry about that. And here's a nice karyotype that you could see. All right, so our objective is to identify the types of human chromosomes in a karyotype. To complete human genome, the complete gen human genome, genome consists of 46 chromosomes, including 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes. Objective two, describe the patterns of inheritance in human traits. So many human traits follow a pattern of simple dominance. For example, a gene known as MC1R helps determine skin and hair color. Some of MC1R's recessive alleles produce red hair. An individual with red hair usually has two set of these recessive alleles inheriting a copy from each parent. Dominant alleles from the MC1R gene help produce darker hair colors. Another trait that displays simple dominance is the RHEs, or RH blood group. The allele for RH factor comes in two forms, RH positive and RH negative. RH positive is dominant, so an individual with both alleles, RH positive and RH negative, is said to have RH positive blood. Rh negative blood is found in individuals with two recessive alleles, Rh positive and Rh negative. And we'll learn more about what happens with this too. So the alleles for many human gmones can display co-dominant inheritance. One example is the ABO blood group, determined by a gene with three alleles, A, B, 
and I. This table shows relationships between genotype and phenotype for the ABO blood group. It also shows which blood types can be safely transfused into people with other blood types. If a patient has an AB negative blood, it means the individuals with AB, all right, right there, alleles from the ABO gene and two RH negative alleles from the RH gene. Alleles A and B are codominant. They produce molecules known as antigens on the surface of red blood cells. Individuals with alleles A and B produce both A and B antigens, making them the blood type AB. The I allele is then recessive. See, the I allele is then recessive. Individuals with alleles AA or AI produce only the A antigen, making them blood type A. AA or AI. Those with BB or BI alleles are type B. Those homozygous for the I allele, II right here, produce no antigen are said to have blood type O. Knowing a person's blood type is critical because using the type of blood for a transfusion, the wrong type of blood for a transfusion can be fatal. Type A and type B red blood cells have antigens for their respective type on their surface. The immune system of a person with type B blood would recognize type A cells as foreign and then produce antibodies against the type A antigen and then vice versa. The immune system of a person with type O blood would recognize both A and B cells as foreign and produce antibodies against both type A and B antigens. People with type AB blood have, have both type A and type B antigens, so they do not produce antibodies against these types of bloods. They are called universal recipients because they can receive all types of blood in a blood transfusion. People with type O blood are called universal donors because their red blood cells have no antigens to elicit any response, and thus their blood can then be safely donated to people of all types of bloods. So donate blood, especially if you're an O type. The genes located on the X and Y chromosomes show a pattern of inheritance called sex-linked. A sex-linked gene is a gene located on the sex chromosome. Genes on the Y chromosome are found only in males and are passed directly from father to son. Genes located on the X chromosome are found on both sexes, but the fact that the men have just one X chromosome leads to some interesting consequences. For example, humans have three genes responsible for color vision, all located on the X chromosome. In males, a defective allele for any of these genes results in color blindness, an inability to distinguish certain colors. The most common form red-green color blindness occurs in about 1 in 12 males. Among females, however, color blindness affects only about 1 in 200. In order for a recessive allele like color blindness to be expressed in females, it must be present in two copies, one on each of the X chromosomes. The recessive phenotype of a sex-linked genetic disorder tends to be much more common among males than it is among females. If just one X chromosome is enough for cells in males, how does the cell adjust to the extra X chromosome in female cells? In female cells, most of the genes in one of the X chromosomes are randomly switched off, forming a dense region in which the nucleus, in the nucleus known as a bar body. Bar bodies are generally not found in males because their single X chromosome is then still active. X chromosomes inactivation also happens in other mammals. In cats, a gene that controls the color of coat spots is located on the X chromosome. One X chromosome may have an allele for orange spots, the other X chromosome may have an allele for black spots. In some parts of the body, one X chromosome is switched off. In other parts of the body, the other X chromosome is switched off. And as a result, the cat's fur has a mixture of orange and black spots. Male cats have just one X chromosome and have spots of only one color. So if a cat's fur has three colors, like white, 
with orange and black spots, for example, you can almost be certain that that cat is then female. Describe the patterns of inheritance of human traits is our objective for number two. So many human traits follow a pattern of simple dominance. But they're also, because the X and Y chromosomes determine sex, the genes located on them show a pattern, pattern of inheritance called sex link, too. Objective three is to explain how pedigrees are used to study human traits. To analyze the patterns of inheritance following a particular trait, you can use a chart called a pedigree, which shows the relationships within a family. A pedigree shows the presence or absence of a trait according to the relationships between parents, siblings, and offspring. This diagram shows what the symbol, symbols in a pedigree represent. This pedigree shows how one human trait, a white lock of hair just above the forehead, as you can see pictured right here, passes through three generations of a family. The allele for the white forelock trait is dominant. At the top of the chart is the grandfather who had a white forelock trait. Two of his three children inherited the trait. Three grandchildren had the trait, but two do not. Because the white forelock trait is dominant, all the family members in the pedigree lacking this trait must have a homozygous recessive alleles. One of the grandfather's children lacks the white forelock trait, so the grandfather must be heterozygous for this trait. The information gained from pedigree analysis makes it possible to determine the nature of genes and alleles associated with inherited human traits. Based on a pedigree, you can often determine if the allele for a trait is a dominant or recessive, autosomal, or sex-linked, too. So, objective three is explaining how pedigrees are used to study human traits. The information gained from pedigree analysis makes it possible to determine the nature of genes and alleles associated with inherited human traits. Our objectives in review here are to identify the types of human chromosomes in a karyotype, Describe the patterns of inheritance of human traits, so go, we'll review those in class too, and also explain how pedigrees are used to determine human traits. This all helps to our supporter goal of to analyze how heredity and family history can impact personal health. And here is somewhat of a cute picture. Enjoy.